Yeah, so today I'm just going to talk briefly about our slide screen game. Um, slide screen something, you know, our quick, quick screen, whatever you guys want to call it. Something that I, I ran, I was at UW Style for five years and we ran it kind of as our staple screen. Um, something that's super easy. And then uh, when I got to Duluth, Coach Weezy was our head coach and was the offense coordinator when I played at UMD. Um, you know, we talked about how we can get our tight ends more involved. And that's kind of what I'm going to be focused on a little more about how to, you know, create a little more chaos with the screen and, you know, make it a little more exciting uh, rather than just flipping it to your running back um, and all that. So uh, we're kind of going to go through this real quick, um, but something I like a lot, um, like coach said, uh, my name is Chase Vogler. I'm the offense coordinator at UMD. I also coach the receivers. Um, was at UW South for five years. Uh, then I had a couple of short stints before that and also played my college ball. Uh, my contact info is down there in the bottom right. Um, it's on the internet like everybody else as well. So if you don't get it now, um, it's pretty easy to find. Uh, if you ever want to get a hold of me or if you guys want this presentation, uh, I'll be more than happy to send it to you. So, um, you know, for us, you know, I'm going to go over a little screen package that we run uh, and, you know, Reasons for you guys to look at this is it's super inexpensive. You know, I always find that screen games are super hard sometimes because you maybe run them three to four times a game if you're if you're a screen team. Um, but if you don't, you know, they take a lot of practice. So I wanted to find a screen game that was super inexpensive uh, yet effective, um, but also can you know create variations off of it. So that's something we we got a little creative with this year and had a lot of fun with, uh, whether it's mixing different motions or us. Uh, looks or tempos um and that's kind of what i'm going to go over go over with uh we got you know really good playmakers at the running back and tight end position for us uh so it's easy ways to get them the ball which as you guys all know uh you win games by getting your best players the ball as much as possible um and then i like it because it's really good on any D, &D. you know we we ran it on you know first and five second and short third and long uh kind of the whole mixed bag uh, which made it a very good play for us. So kind of just talking about our base, how we install it, um, you know, right away is we install it with the whole running back side of things. So, you know, we'll, uh, you know, like everybody else, we're going to slide away from the screen side um, and then we're going to climb. So how we teach it is our, our screen side um, tackle and guard are always going to climb. So if they slide and they have somebody in their gap, they're going to throw. So, uh, we teach that throw as, to make to be as violent as possible. Um, you know, one, it makes it a little more effective, but two, um, you know, all offensive linemen get excited when they can try to throw somebody to the ground uh, without trying to pancake them or something like that. So uh, it's a way to get a little energy into this play and create a little excitement in the huddle, um, you know, when this play is called. Our uh, backside guard and tackle and our center um, are going to slide, and if they have somebody in their gap, they're going to lock. If they don't have anybody, they're going to climb. So a perfect look on this screen is going to be getting three out. Um, and we've done a pretty good job of it. And honestly, this is the only screen we practice. You know, we don't get too crazy. Uh, we do have another slip screen that we have, but uh, we kind of got rid of that once we found like the, the time you spent practicing it isn't worth the effectiveness of the play. Um, so we kind of wholesaled this last year and it became a pretty big staple in our offense. We ended up running it about uh, three or four times a game. Um, and it, we ran in a lot of key situations, which um, is always important. So that's kind of the staple of it. And I'm, I'm, I'll talk a little more about it, but our running back's always going to pivot off inside. I like if we're going to do a running back screen, I like having another option to the, to the perimeter out here. So like here, we got just like a little bubble action. Uh, and give your quarterbacks the option to throw it, but let them know that if you don't love it, get back to your running back um, and so forth. So like here, for instance, um, you know, we're, we're in a trips formation to the field and we're going to kind of do that exact play. So we're going to uh, run bubble to the field and our quarterback can throw a bubble if he wants. It's, it's third and 10. So our cues kind of know a bubble screen is usually meant for six to seven. Ten's a little pushing it. Um, I don't hate it here because the safety is so deep, but uh, you know, our, our easy option is just the running back. So, you know, just to show you from the tight view of what we're kind of looking at here is our line should slide, you know, when you're looking at this to the left, um, and, you know, our, our left tackle and left guard should auto climb. And then whoever doesn't have a guy um, should go as well. So, okay job by our left tackle here with his swipe. I'd like him to be a little more violent, but 
you know, the biggest advice I could have for this play is don't overcoach this thing. You know, it's not, you don't have to build rockets with it. You know, old linemen, they, when they're in space, man, and you make them think too much, it, it all goes, to, it all goes to hell. So tell them to get into space and find color. And if, if they end up on the same guy, they end up on the same guy. Uh, but you know, when linebackers or safeties got big guys running on them, they get slow on their feet. So it's something we like to do. Um, so here's like a little, just our base installed, you know, day three of install. It's what we install. It's the exactly what we want. We got one, two, three out with our running back in space. And, you know, we're just turning that into a glorified punt return. That's kind of all we're trying to do here. Go hit color and let our guys that, you know, we, we give the most money to make the plays um, in the open field. So that's exactly what we're trying to do. Um, you know, same thing here. I'm just going to show you guys a couple examples of this. This is a two-by-two two look. Same thing. You know, our right tackle, our right tackle um, is a little better than our left tackle. Uh, he's a guy that, you know, hopefully in two years is playing on Sundays. So I, I personally like calling this the right just because I know I'm going to get a more of a violent and the easier climb from him. So here's what it should look like. Left, right tackle sucks him in. Uh, right guard's easy release. And we're just throwing. Uh, and we're ducking underneath. And like I said, you don't got to overcoach it. Our, our right tackle and right guard don't do a great job, but they, they scare the hell out of the linebackers. So that's, that's all we're looking for on third and nine. Get the ball to our athletes and let them get into space. Here it is off of tempo. You know, we tempo this play as well. Uh, it's the same thing. You know, we got a split smoke screen to the field, and now we're doing the exact same thing. To release, our left guard gets held up here. So I, I would say it's not a great job by him. When in doubt, climb, it's a screen. Let blitzers go. But that's all we're looking to do is find space and, and get yardage. So that's kind of our, our base way of running it. Uh, and I know a lot of guys probably that are sitting here listening to this uh, run that kind of same screen. Um, you know, I, the, the thing I'm going to talk about right now is kind of the, the next thing um, of where we evolved this whole screen. The coolest thing about this thing is we teach our offensive linemen absolutely nothing different. So everything stays exactly the same for those guys. Um, you know, the only thing that changes at all is our tag. You know, we tag our, our J back instead of our R, or we uh, will tag a, a screen or, a, sorry, a flare or a jet motion or something like that. So kind of the next three variations I'm going to show is kind of the variations I enjoy the most. Um, and if somebody asks me, like, what is my favorite play to call, um, you know, on Saturdays, this would probably be it because – it's kind of the most creative thing we got. You know, we're a pretty fundamentally sound team. We run outside, inside zone and power. Uh, and we throw a lot of, you know, we were throwing like 10 routes. So this is the, as exciting as we get uh, offensively. But, you know, with our, our J tag, now it's our tight end running it. So, um, you know, this is off a of flare screen. You know, kind of how we're going to operate is we want eyes going somewhere else. You know, our, our J back 33, Zach Ogile. Uh, I don't know if we have any Minnesota guys in here, but Spring Lake Park, he's a triple option quarterback, and he's a dude. Um, we want to get him as at least 12 touches a game, so we'll move him to running back. He'll play a little triple option quarterback in our offense, stuff like that. But this is an easy way to get him the ball. So we're going to flare screen it. Once again, our receivers know, like, if we have a flare or a fire, we can throw that. So they're blocking for that at all times. Um, but we're we're mostly going to block for this, this little uh, inside screen action. So – same thing, our J-back's going to run the same path a running back would be. So he's going to be inside, um, and I'm going to – and how we teach this now, and, and we grew through the year on it, we always said pivot off your inside foot. Uh, but if you, have a, if you have an inside technique of you, if you've got a head up six or a five maybe, it's tough to get inside of them and pivot and not get squeezed. So we ended up telling them, if you don't feel safe doing it, widen. If he widens with you, pivot on inside. If he rushes upfield, treat it almost like power read, let him go and – uh, pivot off your inside foot, but outside of them. So almost like a hop outside. And I think there's a couple examples of that. But here's just a little action. You can see the movement we create on the linebackers. Our quarterback does a great job, uh, you know, getting the eyes wide underneath. This is game one, uh, first game of our right guard's career. So he's, he's a little lost here. But, you know, he, he right here should be climbing. And really, he should be the one that ends up picking number eight up in, in a perfect world, obviously. And we all know that's not how everything works. But our – our left tackle and left guard both climbing the same guy. Fine. Like I said, don't overcoach it. Our, our right guard should be to eight and O'Giles should be out the gate. Um, but, you know, obviously still an effective play. Um, you know, key here is a lot of times this screen goes backside with all the motion of the field. So your backside receivers got to do a good job blocking. 
Uh, pretty average job blocking by a receiver there, but um, that's a little look here. Same exact look here. Flare screen. Now we're in two by two with it attached to the field. And here's what I was talking about about the wide movement. Square him up. If he rushes upfield, if he rushes upfield on you, all right, step underneath it. If he's inside of you, then, then widen and let him go. So same thing here. Let him go. Great job by our right guard and right tackle and our left guard. You know, this is, this is a perfect picture right here. Everyone's spreading to color. You know, pancake by our right tackle. We're getting underneath, and we get a little cleanup block there at the goal line for six. Um, so it's a fun little play. And like I said, super, super cheap. So that was our R flare version of it. So we've had our, our running back, um, you know, our basic stuff. We have had our R flare. We run jet power read and jet outside zone. So if you guys like getting your receivers involved, this is a phenomenal concept. I love it in the red zone. You'll see it in a little bit. But this is off of jet. So we're looking – we run some jet wheel, you know, the, the Spider-Man Batman series stuff. Um, you know, here we're showing that. And we're running the exact same screen underneath it with a little shovel. So once again, it looks super cool. It's the same thing we just talked about. Now we just added a different tag to it. You know, that's all we did. So from the tight here, you know, we want to get people moving. And that's exactly what we do. We get 33 out of his fit. All right, 72 is upfield, 57 is upfield. And now we got three running vertical. And like I said on the first play, we're just turning this thing into a glorified punt. And if we can do that, then we're effective. Here it is again. It's never good when you snap the ball about a half second before you're supposed to, and that's what happens here. But third and five in the red zone, exactly what I was talking about. I'm not a great coordinator when it's third and five in the red zone. That's always a tough thing to call. Are you playing third and five or are you playing, you know, on the 13-yard line? It's a tough situation to be in. This is kind of a little comfort area for us. Uh, we'll throw some sort of jet action with a wheel or throw this underneath screen. It's the same thing. We just clear out our running back. Our running back's just a dummy there, and we're just flipping it underneath. Um, you know, and here's from the back end of what it should look like. Boom. Tight end's got an outside head up six. All right, he steps inside. He's got outside movement underneath and just getting vertical. Third and five, no sticks. Same thing. Here's it. Once again. Not really FIB, but kind of the same thing. Our tight end does an average job here, but kind of gets caught in like a weird situation. But you can see what this double, this double action by the running back and the jet guy does. It just pulls everybody out of the box. So our O-line does a great job of climbing, once again, in the red zone, find bodies and get in the end zone. You know, that's what we're really trying to do there. Um, the last way we run it, um, and obviously we, we've run it a couple other ways. You know, the cool thing about this is you can get as unbalanced as you want, as crazy as you want. You can still find a way to run this screen. So we run some toss jag or inside zone invert, however you want to call it, and some toss power read. So now we just added that to the party. So we got the toss action with our tight end stepping underneath. It's the same thing. Just get guys pulling. You know, it doesn't ever help when your center goes the wrong way. But it happens to the best of us. So here's the action, a little dump underneath. Same exact thing. This is a super chaotic play late in the game. Uh, but, you know, effective still, even when you got everybody going the wrong way. Here's a little better look of it with the toss power read action. Slide, slide. And, our, you know, I always, I always tell our offensive linemen here, hey, you can never be too fast on this. Like slide and go if you don't have anybody. So our right tackle is a little poor here. If you're too slow on this screen, you're going to bog everything up, and that's when, that's when trouble happens. So a little action there, get vertical. And, a, you know, it's a little chaotic, but still an effective play on second and six, um, you know, to get our tight end the ball. So, you know, a little quick for you guys, obviously. You know, I don't want to hold everybody up. You know, for, for us, like I just talked about, kind of the keys to success um, is your screen side guard and tackle are always climbing to second level no matter what. If it's a blitzer, let them go. You know, our quarterback will have to figure that out. Um, your wayside tackle guard and your center will only climb if no one shows in their gap. And that, honestly, those three is something we practice a lot because that's kind of the most 
Uh, everyone else has kind of got rules of this plan, but they kind of got to decipher who's going. So we practice that a ton. Um, you know, screen side tackle should throw if you can. RB needs to pivot off inside foot and find alley. Tight end will punch and pivot versus outside technique, uh, but will skate and pivot versus inside technique. So if, if you get a wide guy, you can skate. If he's inside of you, just widen yourself and turn. Um, and then if you're using the tight end side of things, you know, mix in some flares, some jets, unbalance, tempo. Uh, if you're doing some running back stuff, mix in on a bubble look or a, a speed out to the boundary um, and stuff like that. So, you know, that's all I got for you guys. You know, I think I made it underneath the 15 minute threshold, but um, if anybody, does anybody have any questions at all? Uh, nothing in the chat right now, but uh, Perfect. You, guys, you guys feel free to send Yeah. Send coach. Uh, uh, you can P private message him on here too, if you don't want anybody to see it as well. So, but all right, Chase, man, we appreciate you coming on. Good stuff.